Hey there cruisers, my name's Kieran Phillips and I'm here on board the MSC Grandiosa working as a guest entertainer. Now I've been working on cruise ships for over 14 years, not only as a musician but also as a cruise director and in that time I feel like I've really built up a sense of how cruise lines operate. Now I'm in a very unique position here on board because I'm not only a crew member but I'm also someone who has passenger privileges so I get to see both sides of how cruising life has changed. Now we all know COVID-19 has really affected the cruise industry, but in particular, some of the safety protocols that have been in place in order to let a ship like this sail safely. So please join me in this blog while we look through those safety precautions and protocols and how cruising life has changed for both passengers and crew alike. So in this video, I'll be focusing on the passenger perspective of what it was like to be on the MSC Grandiosa this summer. Not only looking at the safety sides, but also looking how things have changed in line with the COVID safety rules. This is a tasty view of us leaving Genoa on a Sunday evening. Now, as you can see, the sun was out, beautiful weather, and this was late August, early September. But uh, when it started to head to October, the weather started to dip a little bit, where it got a little bit more rainy and a little bit more cold. But being on a state-of-the-art vessel meant people had plenty to do. So let me first explain what I do on board as a guest entertainer. Oh, who's this good looking guy? Sexy. Oh. <laughs> I'm a singer drummer and I play in a Beatles production show called Beatles Celebration. Now on the MSC Grandiosa, we also played in a 60s production show, as you can see here. Have a listen. So I'm going to take you on a little tour of deck six, which is the main deck on board. It's also the deck that's got that lovely LED ceiling, which has several shows a day, which I will show you a little bit later. So this first restaurant is the Bistro, which is a lovely Italian styled restaurant, which was very popular when I was on board, not only because of its great food, but also it's got music several times a day, which creates a lovely romantic atmosphere. Now, in my opinion, the most dangerous place on board is the gelato shop, which really is dangerous because it's got milkshakes, smoothies, ice cream. Literally, I have the biggest sweet tooth, so I needed to stay well clear. Similarly, if we go down the mall is Jean-Philippe's Chocolate Cafe, which may I tell you is an amazing place. Loads of homemade chocolate made right in front of you on the ship, and they did have one of the best hot chocolates I have ever had. So have a look out for that if you go on board. Next to that is the secondary lounge. So you'll get your main party band in here that play pretty much every night for the 60s parties. And as you can see, everything's socially distanced on the seats. We've got certain seats that people can't sit in in order to maintain those socially distanced bubbles. And then on we go to the theatre, which I will talk about a little bit later on. So currently on board, we have roughly 1,250 passengers. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that's not sustainable as a financial model. But actually, this has been really good for the MSC brand. We've had countless TV stations on here, and we've also had helicopters going around the ship filming. So where they might not have been getting the same revenue through the same revenue streams, such as the casino, the spa, the shops, they've done amazingly for the brand as they've been one of the only ships to successfully sail to different ports and keep COVID-19 at bay. Do you remember a time when you lived on deck eight and you were going to deck 14, but by the time the elevator got to deck 10, it was packed to the rafters full of people? Well, consider that an issue of the past as now due to social distancing, the elevators have a maximum capacity of either two or four, depending on the lift size. This is another important safety measure to ensure the two metre rule is adhered to.
So as we all know, the gym for some people is just as important as getting a suntan when they're going on holiday, and it's no exception now. The only difference is when you go to the gym, you'll see, as you can see on this video, these white labels on the machines, which let you know that you can't use those machines, and that is all in order to keep people uh, away from each other at least by two meters and obviously extra encouragement is made in order to wipe machines down after you've finished. So sticking with that exercise theme we have our mile walk outside which is another chance for passengers to burn off those extra calories they've been consuming on board but in a lovely idyllic setting and in this case it's the city of Naples in the background absolutely gorgeous. Now masks are encouraged to be worn whilst exercising unless you're doing anything strenuous. And in that case, you can take your mask off for a breather, but not if you're around a big group of people. We are all human and there will be times where you leave your cabin and you completely forget your mask. But rest assured, there'll be some people around the ship who will remind you. So good morning, can you put your mask please? Thank you very much. Put your mask on. Sir, excuse me, can you put your mask, please? Thank you. So, another time you don't have to wear your mask is if you're sunbathing outside and on a deck chair, and obviously when you're swimming in the swimming pool. In order that we can sail safely during these times, we need to embrace new technology. And this watch is going to be a very important friend during your cruise. Now this is a dual purpose watch. Now the first purpose is it acts as a cabin card. So let's say you want to order a drink from the bar, then the bar steward will come up to you with their tablet and you will tap this watch up to the tablet and it will bill the drink to your room, basically as a cabin card would do. But far more importantly, this watch is its own track and trace system. So if you or anyone else comes into contact with someone that has tested positive for COVID-19 or has symptoms of COVID-19, then the ship will successfully track and trace that person. Speaking of new technologies, there's a new way to get bar service on board, and that's by using your smartphone. Now, all you'll have to do is scan a QR code, which will bring up the menu on your phone and you'll order from there, and it will be brought over to your table. Not only does this reduce queue sizes at the bars, but also gives a more pleasurable experience for the passengers because it means they don't have to keep getting up to go to the bar every 10 or 15 minutes to reorder drinks. The next voice you'll hear is the captain's voice. And this was the morning of the letter in Malta. Now this was well before I'm due to get up. So please do excuse the breathing in the background. It was uh, something that woke me up and I thought I should record it because it's a really interesting insight into how the ship was dealing with any suspected cases on board. In the case is identified while on board, there is a specific contingency plan in place to handle this type of situation. In line with the protocol this morning upon arrival, we regularly declared a suspected case, which is a female crew member reported with a very large symptoms she was immediately isolated while awaiting initial precautionary testing and remaining in isolation following the initial result which will need to be further verified by an assured lab. Until then, she will continue to remain in isolation in this dedicated section of our ship, which is completely excluded from the rest. I also want to reassure you that we have immediately identified all her close contact so that we could immediately isolate them as well as test them. Since then, they, they have all been tested and I'm very pleased to report they are all negative. So once again, I also want to reassure you that we have immediately identified all the close contact so that we could immediately isolate them as well as test them. Since then, they have all been tested and I'm very pleased to report that they are all negative. The suspected case, as well as air close contact in line with the protocol, may be disembarked in Genova to receive further care there. 
Thankfully, in this case, no one tested positive for COVID-19, but it's important to focus on the procedure and the new technology working in harmony in order that the ship could move on and successfully sail on to the next port. So when it comes to the buffet and the restaurant experiences, things are pretty much the same, apart from a few minor changes. Now the main change in the buffet is it's no longer self-service. So you still queue as normal, but you tell the chef what you want and then you move down the line. Now in the restaurant, it's laid out the same, apart from obviously the social distancing with the chairs, but it's encouraged that you actually use technology in order to order your food and order your drinks. So using the QR code and your smartphone. Now the one thing the two have in common is the temperature check that you have before eating. Now you wash your hands and then be moved on and there'll be a member of staff taking your temperature before you eat. Thank you. So lucky for me, I had a temperature reading of 36.2. Had it been 37.5 or above, I would have been taken to the medical center. And this is the same process that happens before you eat in the main restaurant also. So as promised, we're gonna go back into the theater. Now, as a member of Beatles Celebration, we play in here once or twice a week. And production shows generally, as a rule, haven't changed too much from an audience perspective. But one thing you will notice is this new idea of socially distanced seating, which means that the capacity of the theater is greatly reduced for each show. After each show or event that took place in the theater or any lounge for that matter, we would have the Ghostbusters, as you can see here, disinfecting all the seats ready for the next show or performance. Now, just like on every other cruise ship in the world, the pool is one of the most popular places. And when you are on a sunbed, as I said before, you don't have to wear a mask, but that doesn't mean things aren't kept very clean and very safe. As you can see here, we have one of our Ghostbusters again, disinfecting all the seats at the end of every day. We've come towards the end, and firstly, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching. But before I end, I'd like to give you some of my own opinions on what it was like to be on the MSE Grandiosa and cruising in general. Now, I know a lot of people are apprehensive and dubious about the safety precautions and uh, is it safe to cruise, etc, etc. Now, in my opinion, cruising is now the safest way to go on holiday. 100% of the people that will be joining a cruise, not only crew and passengers, will have been tested at least once to go on a cruise ship. Now, if you go anywhere else in the world to your favourite holiday destination, Lots of people you'll be coming across, the supermarkets, the beaches, won't have been tested for COVID-19. But on a cruise ship, absolutely everyone is. Don't close your eyes. For many of you, I don't know if you can remember what it is like to cruise anymore. It feels like so long. So I put together a selection of clips and also that amazing ceiling on deck six I was talking about earlier, just to end the video on a nice positive note. So God bless, I'll see you sometime soon. I'm Kieran and safe travels. to your day.